I'm here with my good friend Tanner and today we're going to talk about how style affects confidence in the gym. So I'm here with my good friend Tanner, uh, who runs Masculine Style. You are my style coach. I am. And I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, style in the weight room and specifically how it affects confidence. You know, we we talk a lot about, you know, pe people are crazy about the music they listen to right. in the weight room. Uh, if they're going for a big PR or a big lift, they want a specific thing to hear, that they think about the atmosphere around them. Uh, they want an atmosphere where maybe there's people watching or clapping or cheering them on, like workout partners, all of that stuff we give a lot of thought to, but we often don't think about the impact that style has or our, our clothing specifically has on our confidence and therefore our performance in the weight room. How, yeah. how does that uh, apply to us? Yeah, I think that one of the big mistakes that a lot of people make, especially men tend to make, is the association or the assumption that my style really only has an impact on the way that other people perceive me. And it's really easy when it comes to you know, uh, going through a good like prep routine before you try and do a squat PR that you get under the bar the right way, or right. you get your, you know, you get your, your pump music on or something else like that. It's easy for us to understand that the real purpose of that is to get you really present in the moment. Mm. And clothing has that exact same effect as yeah. well. And so that should be your primary purpose when you think about your clothing is how can I dress in a way that it it makes it so that I'm very present in what it is that I'm doing. That may be so that I feel like I'm performing for other people, or at least that I'm not feeling self-conscious about what I'm wearing. You can't totally omit the fact that other people have an opinion and you will you will have that kind of bleed into your brain a little bit. But even more so than that, because even if you, I mean, I've got a garage gym, I work out at home. Yeah. And even just the ritual of putting on like, these are my gym clothes, or this is what I wear to do this versus what I wear to do that is different and if you if you challenge that idea i mean go try and set a pr wearing jeans and a sport coat that's right. tell me that it doesn't affect your ability to just mentally be present and feel like you're you're ready to go in and do the work yeah absolutely actually vice versa one of the things i've learned from you is that i don't wear my gym clothes on my business zoom calls right. anymore either i dress like the ceo of the company that i am and so so for me figuring out what i need to wear to make me feel more present in the moment first is really important. And then there is a piece of this where I don't wanna feel silly mm -hmm. or our viewers don't wanna feel silly by whoever else is present in the room. Totally. Now, that's not primary nope. for us. For me, I'm training in the garage or I'm training in my, in my home gym with my wife who I've been with for almost 30 years. She doesn't really care about the way I look. And right. yet I've noticed that like, I try to wear gym clothes that she compliments me on when I wear them and she does the same for me. Like she knows that there are certain outfits. I'm like, you look great today. Mm -hmm. And we're the only audience that we have. And so both we feel good about what we're wearing and therefore we feel like we're ready to perform yep. and more present in the moment. But I also feel like this person who's watching me, this person who I actually love and care about their opinion of me, not the stranger in the right. gym who I don't know at all and I'll never see again, right. that I also am being able to do something for them where they're like, man, they look really good while they're performing the lift. So there is a little bit of that as totally. secondary for totally. me as well. Yeah, it's not to say that it doesn't exist. I mean, you have to be a complete sociopath to say that nobody's opinion of me matters and it doesn't affect my self-perception or my ability to perform or anything to that yeah. effect. And so absolutely, but it's secondary instead of primary. Yeah, that's yeah. great. So do you have suggestions specifically about the way we think about the clothes we wear for performance. So not just the presence of, or the or the the sort of uh, culturally atmosphere, the way it sets me in my mindset, but how certain things like, for example, I'll think about things like, I don't wanna wear baggy shorts when I squat that are going to inhibit right. the depth of my squat. I don't wanna wear slick t-shirts on a bench press where I'm gonna slide down right. the bench. Have you thought about that much? Yeah. And then. And then trying to figure out sometimes those things that are the most functional are often not the most stylish. So trying to find the combination between the two, I think is really important totally. as well. Yeah, so basically what you're getting at is the idea that you have uh, two different purposes. You have function and you have form. That's right. And sometimes it can feel like they're mutually exclusive. Most of the time they're not. That's you just right. have to do a little bit digger deeping. And so function obviously with something as physical as what we're doing in the gym is huge. Yep. Again, trying to deadlift in a three piece suit doesn't Not gonna work. work. It doesn't work from a form perspective and it absolutely doesn't work from a function perspective. That's right. And so you have to be able to find and wear things that are going to work in that regard. And I think one of the things that's so fascinating about this is you look at even just the different barbell disciplines where you look at the way bodybuilders dress versus the way CrossFit athletes do, which is mm. different than how powerlifters do. Right. And you get all of these little things 
that they start off and they're rooted in function and then from there they start to expand and kind of extrapolate into form where maybe colors get introduced or the cuts are a little bit different and the materials may breathe a little bit differently or something yeah. else. And so I would say that's when you start to move into the form component of it is what is it again that is going to make you feel the most confident and competent in the environment in which you find yourself because you can dress like a crossfitter in a powerlifting gym and you're gonna feel some level of self-consciousness because right. you don't belong in the environment. That's right. Or if you're not totally killing it with your physique and you're wearing all the latest, like most hype beast, athletic bodybuilder gear and it's there's a dissonance between what your clothing says and what your body says, that creates this self-consciousness. And so it's being able to really just pay attention to and calibrate yeah, again, functionally, what does my clothing do? But then from a form perspective, what is it that's going to make me feel present? What is it that's going to make me feel like I'm I'm sending the right signals to other people and to myself so that I can be there and I can actually focus on the task at hand yeah. instead of always having these little things in the back all like, she's looking at me this way or this dude's laughing behind my back or I, I don't really care but you spend all this time convincing yourself you don't care that's and right. that's where all your mental energy goes. And that's right. If you get it dialed, that all disappears yeah. and you just yeah. get a focus on the job. Yeah, that's great. I really like that. I, I like too that you actually talked about like the, the idea, there is, a, there is a concept too of dressing for who you want to be, mm -hmm. but you can take that too far, right? right? So you can go like, look, if, if you are a completely out of shape beginner, you don't have the V taper of a bodybuilder, but you decide to wear the super short shorts or the Zubaz pants and the string tank top. <laughs> yes. But but you've got the extra side boob coming out. Like maybe maybe you could take one step in that direction. And so a little more form fitting clothes. Yeah. Like for me, I remember back in the, you know, when I was a poor college kid, I would I would just take an old t-shirt, cut the sleeves right. off and wear an old t-shirt. But like and I still have, honestly, I still have those. Some of those are in storage as sort of memories of yes. what I used yeah, to look like. because you've or, injected all this meaning and symbolism right. onto it. But yeah. now I like to dress in a way that is, it's form fitting, it's tight fitting, you know, in my shoulders and my, and my arms and my chest, it's got enough drape in the waist. The shorts are not uh, bunchy or in a way that's gonna inhibit any of the lifting. The shoes that I wear are, you know, so I'll wear tennis shoes when I bench press, I'll wear squat shoes when I squat mm -hmm. or deadlift or, or press and so, or knee sleeves when they're appropriate. And even things for me, like making sure that the colors coordinate between yeah. the shoes, the knee sleeves, the belt, the shorts. And again, some people aren't gonna care, but for me that I'm a little bit OCD that if I get too many colors that are that are contrasting in a way that sort of makes me feel weird, mm -hmm. then I, I'm actually thinking about how ridiculous that right. looks. And so you're paying attention to that instead of the lift. And I wanna be present. So even for me in the music, I talked about this on the, on the podcast a couple weeks ago. I don't, I've lifted for so long that I don't come up with a new song to pump me up mm -hmm. for every single PR song. People that have watched my videos or listened to podcasts know I have a, like, I listen to Bleeding Me by Metallica. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the greatest song in the world. There's not, I'm not saying there's anything but special. But it does the job for you. It's familiarity. It puts me yeah. in the present moment. So it's not about screaming, rah, 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 slap in the face, adrenaline rush. It's about almost every PR I have ever set for the past 20 years has been set with that song playing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it, it is, it takes the focus from here to here, right. it narrows it. And I've started to have the same thing with my clothes. I have certain clothes that I wear when I wanna set deadlift PRs, yep. when I wanna set squat PRs, and they're a little different, right? Rachel thinks about, she'll bench press and press with tank tops on, mm -hmm. but she won't squat with tank tops on because too much skin is exposed mm -hmm. to the neural on the bar. Yep. So some of the, so she's gonna wear more of a form-fitting shirt than a tank top. So the combination of clothes that make you feel confident, clothes that make you feel good, and also clothes that are functional for the performance that we're, we're going to do, right. really ultimately put us in the moment. Totally. And as much as music or anything else right. we're gonna do. Well, you can even take it and extrapolate it beyond the gym and you think about anything, you look at any culture and you look at ritual. Okay? Whether that's a religious ritual or a civic ritual or something else. And there's always these kind of elements where there's certain body movements that happen. That's what you're doing when you're that's in the right. gym. There's certain music or chants or something else that's associated with it. And so that's the same thing that to get you present. And there's always ritual clothing that's, that's associated right. with it too, because you get the combination of those three things where you take these physical inputs of what you see, 
what you hear and what you do when you move and it affects your state of mind. Yes. And so we're absolutely insane to not consciously and conscientiously think of those three elements when we're going through the ritual of making ourselves better in the gym. Yeah, I love that. One thing you never, which you never mentioned was brand. I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to impress people with the money I'm spending no. on my clothes. It's never that, no. right? And that doesn't mean that there aren't high quality brands out there. We have the brands that we love. Yeah. We have the brands that don't fall apart. Right. When you're training and training hard, low quality clothes will fall apart over time. But it's not about having the logo no. on the shirt or the logo on the shorts or whatever. It's more about all of those other things, the way it makes me feel, the way it performs, like that's what I'm looking for first to be present in the moment. Yeah, and again, it's finding the brands that even they get it on that level where it's not this kind of like crass overt status display or it's the kind of big name that everybody's associated with. You know, some of my favorites are, are really the smaller brands like Oliver's Apparel or 10,000 yeah. or Kino Clothing or some of these others yeah. that they allow the clothing to do the talking both to the audience, but most importantly to you. Yes. It's not that I'm a billboard for this particular company. That's right. My identity is wrapped up in this That's brand. Right. It's that the clothing is there to supplement you and who you are as opposed to you being an advertiser. That's right, brand. right. And I'm the same way. So I don't have any relationship with clothing manufacturers. I love like Lululemon yeah. shorts, Lulu, like Lululemon pants. They fit really well. I like the way they perform. I wear fresh clean tees mm -hmm. or true classic tees, which are no logo tees. Right. They're made to fit tight. Um, tight where they're supposed to be tight, yeah. arms, shoulders, not overly tight, drape in the midsection, and they just make me feel better about who I am. I can see myself in the mirror and I just think like, okay, I look the part here. I don't look frumpy. I don't look, you know, messy. And so I love that look. And then man, think this is just another place where the world has completely changed over the last several years. Five, 10 years ago, we didn't have options like this. No. That was, it. that's what it was. Like you would go on and you'd see these ads on social media and they were for the like the ridiculous bodybuilding. It right. was the string, string all the way, <laughs> barely, yes. not even covering the nipples. Right. And that, you're like, I'm not gonna dress that's like that. That's, yeah. that's exactly right. So I do love that even fitness clothing now, style, the, what we're, the way we style in the gym can actually reflect who we are even in the rest of our life. Totally. Uh, and that's really, really cool. So you've got that opportunity. And so if it's not something that you've thought about, I would just, you've probably thought about the music that you listen to. You've probably thought about the gym that you train at, whether that's a home gym or a public gym, a place that's the great atmosphere where people are supporting you and encouraging you. Style should just be another one of those variables totally. that we put a lot of thought in to help us perform and be in the moment. Yeah, and watch it just key up everything else that you're already doing. It's such a, a supplement and there's this synergy of when you get the right environment, the right music, and then you add in the right clothing and you just, you're better at it. Yeah, I love it. So. For more of this conversation, you've been on my podcast uh -huh. on Barbell Logic. We'll link it in the show notes. We actually also, Nikki and I just talked about this in a recent Barbell Logic podcast on confidence in the gym. You can check those in the show notes. And for more great tips on accessories, confidence, and how to perform in the gym, just click the link right up there in the corner. See you next time. Hey everybody, you just met Tanner and I in the previous video that we just did. Tanner is a sponsor of this video, but he's also my style coach. Yeah, I would love to chat with you guys, especially because you'll find out that my approach is very similar to what Matt and the Block team do. It's minimum effective dose. It's how this contributes to your overall quality of life, not making this, this the biggest, most important thing that you have going on. So if you want to learn more about what we do, especially as it relates to Block, go click this link up here and uh, we can talk and see how it fits in for you.